This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, we're now going to look at the budgeting chapter in the uh, free lecture notes. And um, I'm going to split this into several lectures, uh, of which this is obviously the first, because there are quite a few separate things uh, we need to go through. Uh, and the first thing, uh, a bit of chat, is what do we mean by budgeting and why do we do budgeting? I think most of you have heard of the word and a lot of people think that, oh, the budget is just forecasting what next year's profit is going to be. And although that might unusually would be um, sort of the end result, um, that isn't all that's involved. I mean, the word budget means plan. The budgets are the plans for next year. And budgets aren't necessarily simply numbers. You know, for example, if I'm a company making uh, desks, I need to plan ahead. How many staff do I need for next year? Uh, I'll do a staff budget uh, that, oh, I need 100 employees next year. I need to budget. I need to plan. If we haven't got enough employees, we need to start recruiting. If we've got too many, Oh, I need to find ways of uh, getting rid of them. And so if you look at the second page, it's headed up benefits of budgeting or the reasons for preparing budgets. And the first one, the one I just mentioned, is planning. But again, it's not simply what will next year's profit be. It's planning. Uh, how many staff I'm going to need next year, uh, how much materials I'm going to buy next year, and so on. Um, it's a series of little plans. For example, how many workers needed next year. We need to plan in advance, again, so we can start recruiting people if we need to. A second reason for doing budgets is controlling. You know, maybe I've uh, done my plans and decided how many workers we need next year and planned how much I'm going to pay them. And maybe as a result, I'm budgeting on spending $5,000 a month next year on wages. Well, that's what I'm hoping I'll be spending, $5,000 a month. But... Having done that, then as we actually start working next year, I can keep comparing. I can say in January, we should be spending 5,000. How much did we spend? And if it turns out we spent $6,000, I'll want to know why. Uh, maybe I have no choice. Wages have gone up. Uh, I just have to pay more. Or maybe something's gone wrong. Maybe we should have paid 5,000 for some reason. We made a mistake and paid 6000 Well, if something's gone wrong in January, then find out what went wrong. Hopefully I can correct it and not be overpaying in February, March and so on. And so that's another reason for uh, uh, preparing budgets. We can compare actual figures, usually month by month, with the budget. We can use it to control. Again, if we have uh, overspent, if there has been some sort of mistake, we can control it. Uh, we can stop overspending in later months. A third reason, coordination. Uh, what I mean here is, um, suppose I ask my sales manager, how many do you think we can sell next year? And he says 50,000 units. He wants to budget that will sell 50,000. I ask my production manager, how many do you think we can produce next year? And he says 80,000. He wants to budget on producing 80,000. But of course, 
We don't want that happening. We don't want to produce 80,000 units if we're only going to sell 50,000. We need to make sure that everything fits together. I want to make sure that I produce what I think I can sell. And if I know how many I'm producing, we need to make sure that we've enough staff to fit in with the level of production and so on. And so that's coordinating. It's my job, if I'm in charge of the budget process, to make sure it does all fit together. I'm producing what I think I can sell, I've got the right number of staff for the number I'll produce, and so on. So for example, make sure budget on producing what we can sell. What we budget on selling. Okay, the two don't have to be identical. We may be wanting to produce more to build up inventory, but I think you see my point. We need to make sure everything fits together. Uh, next one, authorising and delegating. Maybe we've produced our plans, our budgets, we've decided how many we're going to produce, we've decided, oh, we need 500 employees. Well, fine, once the budget has been agreed that we need 500 employees, it's now the responsibility of perhaps the human resources manager to make sure we've got the right number of employees. The budget gives them permission. The budget says we need 500, fine. They've got permission to recruit to make sure we've got 500. They don't need to come back and ask my permission unless for some reason they find they need more. Uh, the budget gives permission or authority to the manager. Or it tells the manager what to do. We've delegated, it's now their responsibility to make sure they do what the budget is telling them to do. Evaluation, uh, performance. These plans, these budgets, uh, give the managers a target. You know, perhaps I've budgeted on spending 5,000 a month on uh, wages. Well, whoever's responsible for paying the wages, that is their target. I've said 5,000 a month, they've got to make sure that they spend 5,000 or less. If they end up spending more than 5,000, I want to know why. And unless there's a good reason for it, uh, I'll penalise them. They have done a bad job. If they manage to spend less than 5,000, they've done well. And maybe I'll, I'll give them a bonus. So the budget is a target for the managers. Month by month, usually, we'll compare what they did with what the budget said. Again, if they've done better, maybe I'll give them a bonus. If they've done worse, maybe I'll sack them. Uh, and a final reason for doing budgets, communicating and motivating. And it really overlaps uh, with two of those already mentioned. Uh, when we tell the managers, this is your budget, you'll produce this many units, you'll employ this many workers, and so on. Well, we're communicating, we're telling the managers what we want. Uh, and at the same time, if we're using it to measure performance, it's hopefully motivating the managers. The managers uh, want to do better than budget. Uh, 
I said before, if we're going to reward them, if we're going to give them a bonus for doing better than budget, hopefully it'll motivate them, it'll encourage them to try and do better, which of course is better for the company. And so those are all the potential benefits of doing budgets. It isn't simply, as I said at the beginning, trying to forecast next year's profit. There's a lot more to it. It's planning each separate bit, having a, a way of controlling as the year goes on, coordinating, authorising, evaluating performance, uh, uh, and communicating and motivating. All right, one more thing before I pause this lecture, and then we'll carry on with some numbers. It's how are we going to go about it? Suppose, I don't know where you work, but suppose you work in a company manufacturing desks. And I said to you, OK, tomorrow, go ahead and start doing budgets for next year. Well, where are you going to start? You know, I want to... You're going to have to budget for me, how many are you going to sell, how many are you going to produce, how many workers you'll need, and so on. But where are you going to start? And surely for most businesses, the first thing you'll budget is how many you think you'll sell. Because only when you know how many you're going to sell can you then decide how many you're going to produce. And only when you know how many you're going to produce can you then decide how much material we'll need, how many workers we'll need, and so on. So that has to be a starting point, and as I say, for most businesses, it would be the level of sales. Well, the first thing we budget is known as the principal budget factor. And as I say, it will usually be sales, oops, the sales units. Because once you know how many you'll sell, then you could budget how many you'll produce. And when you know how many you'll produce, then you could budget how much materials you'll need. You can budget how many workers you'll need, or labour, uh, and so on. It would be step by step, but we would normally start with sales. However, I keep saying normally, but not always, strictly the principal budget factor is whatever lim is limiting The size of the business. You know, we want to make as much profit as we can next year, but what's limiting us? And usually, again, it's the demand, the sales. If customers only want 50,000 units, that's our limit. You know, there's no point in producing more. We'll budget on selling 50,000, therefore how many will produce, therefore how much labour. But it could be something else. Suppose it was the case that customers, we think we, we could sell 50,000 units. But I'm making desks and we need wood. And this year, for some reason, wood is in short supply. And because we can only get a limited amount of wood, we can only actually make 40,000 units. Now, OK, customers want 50,000, but if we've only enough wood to make 40,000, fine. That would be our starting point. We'll produce 40,000. Therefore, we'll sell 40,000. And if we know we're producing 40,000, then we can work out how much material we need, how much labour we need, and so on. And so, although, as I say, it's usually sales that limit us, it could be, for example, materials in short supply. And therefore, that's the first thing you'd budget. 
your budget, how much material is available. Once you know how much materials you've got, you could budget on how many you can produce. When you knew how many you could produce, then you could budget your sales. You could budget how much labour you need, and so on. So I hope that makes sense. I mean, really what I've typed, which is what I just said. But principal budget factor, the first thing you'll budget, and it's whatever is limiting us, whatever's stopping us being bigger. Normally, again, sales. But if anything's in short supply, the shortage of materials, that could be the first thing to budget. If there's a shortage of labour, you know, we can't produce the numbers that customers want. If there's a shortage of labour, budget the labour, and that would dictate how many we could produce, and so on. All right, sorry that was all talking, but I'll stop this lecture here. The next lecture will actually go through an example of the preparation of the budgets.